Welcome geniuses, I'm Genie, your best buddy for A-Levels. In this channel, we'll bring you to explore the secret formula behind success. When the right hand side of the second order differential equation is not zero, then we need to find a function known as the particular integral, which satisfies the differential equation. It should be clear that since the second order differential equation, a times d square y dx squared plus b times dy dx plus c times y equals to fx can be written as a times d square y over dx squared plus b times dy dx plus cy equals to 0 plus fx. The general solution can be written as ycf plus ypi, where ycf represents the complementary function and ypi represents the particular integral. The problem to be addressed now is the form of the particular integral, a general rule covering all possible functions fx cannot be given. However, it is possible to draw up a table of suitable forms for the particular integral, given the possible forms of fx within the scope of the syllabus. This is shown here. So the first type is a polynomial of degree n, and the particular integral is a0 plus a1x plus a2x squared plus dot 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 a n times x to the power of n. The second type is a e to the power of bx, and the particular integral is p e to the power of bx. And the third type is a cos px plus b sine px, and we change it into p cos px plus q sine px. And we are going to solve for, in the first case, a0, a1, a2, and then for the second case, we are going to solve for p, and the third case, we are going to solve for p and q. There are a number of special cases which should be accounted for in order to clarify the meaning of the table above. Suppose, for example, fx equals to x cubed, then the particular integral is px cubed plus qx squared plus rx plus s, not px cubed. Similarly, if fx equals to cos px and p cos px does not appear in the complementary function, then the particular integral is of the form of p cos px plus q sine px and not p cos px only. And a similar analysis applies in the case where fx equals to sine px. A problem occurs when the particular solution as determined above already appears in the complementary function ycf. The solution to this problem is to keep multiplying the particular integral by x until the resulting function no longer appear in the complementary function. Let us now consider the following example. The AQE is m squared minus 2m plus 1 equals to 0. The AQE has a repeated real root, which is 1. Thus, the complementary function, ycf for this case, is ax plus b times e to the power of x. According to the table above, since fx equals to 2 times e to the power of x, the particular integral ypi is p times ex. However, this function already appears in the complementary function, multiplying the proposed particular integral by x gives us a revised particular integral of px times e x. This function also appears in the complementary function, so we multiply the revised particular integral by x again. This gives the particular integral of px squared times e x. Note that this function does not appear in the complementary function anymore. Thus, the particular integral is given by px squared e x. Fitting the particular integral 
through the given differential equation gives ddx 2 times px e to the x plus px squared e to the x minus 2 times ddx of p times x squared e to the x plus px squared e to the x and equals to 2 times e to the x. Simplifying the equation and we obtain p equals to 1. So we know that ypi equals to p times x squared times e to the x. So p equals to 1, the ypi is x squared e to the x. And the general solution is YCF plus YPI. So the YCF is AX plus B times E to the X and YPI is X squared E to the X. So the overall equation is Y equals to AX plus B E to the X plus X squared E to the X. And this is the final step to solve for the particular solution. Note that there are two arbitrary constants in the general solution above. If, in addition, two pieces of information are supplied, which makes it possible to form two equations involving A and B, then the particular solution to the given differential equation can be found. This information is often referred to as the boundary conditions or the initial conditions. Suppose, for example, that it is given that dy dx equals to 2 and y equals to 1 when x equals to 0, then values for a and b can be found as shown below. So we have the general solution as y equals to ax plus b times e to the x plus x squared times e to the x. Differentiating these equations, we obtain a times e to the x plus ax plus b e to the x plus 2x e to the x plus x squared e to the x. Inserting the boundary conditions into the equation above and we'll obtain b equals to 1, a plus b equals to 2 and hence a equals to 1. So a and b are 1 and we substitute that back into our general solution and hence, we found out that the particular solution is thus given by y equals to 1 plus x plus x squared times e to the x. Now, let us look at how to use substitution method in the solution of second order differential equations. This is best explained by an example. So let's say if x equals to e to the power of t, show that x times dy dx equals to dy dt, and x squared times d squared y over dx squared equals to d squared y over dt squared minus dy dt. Use these results to reduce the differential equation to x squared times d squared y dx squared plus x dy dx minus 4y equals to 16 to a differential equations in y and t and hence solve it given that y equals to 0 and dy dx equals to 0 when x equals to 1. So this is the most complicated kind of question that you can find in this chapter.
relationships connecting X, Y, and T must be established. Since Y does not appear in the given relationship, it is introduced by differentiating with respect to Y. So we have X equals to E to the power of T. So dx dy equals to e to the power of t dt dy and we flip that and we have dy dx equals to e to the power of negative t dy dt and so we have x times dy dx equals to dy dt and this is the first relationship for x y and t we now differentiate this first equation with respect to t hence d dt x dy dx equals to d squared y dt squared and differentiate the left hand side using the product rule we have dx dt dot dy dx plus x dot d dt dy dx equals to d squared y dt squared and from the first proof, we have seen that the relationship between x and t is dx dt equals to x. So we are going to substitute dx dt as x. So x times dy dx plus x times d dx dy dx dot dx dt equals to d squared y dt squared. And the dx dt can now be replaced with x again. So we have x times dy dx plus x times d squared y over dx squared times x, which is x squared equals to d squared y dt squared. Rearranging this equation, and we have proved the second equation that is required by the question x squared times d squared y dx squared equals to d squared y dt squared minus dy dt. Now, given that the differential equation is x squared d squared y dx squared plus x dy dx minus 4y equals to 16, substituting equation 1 and equation 2 into this original differential equation gives d squared y dt squared minus dy dt plus dy dt minus 4y equals to 16 which simplifies to d squared y dt squared minus 4y equals to 16. This is now solvable using the seven steps that I've shown just now. So the AQE is given by m squared minus 4 equals to 0, from which we deduce that m equals to plus minus 2. The complementary function is thus given by YCF equals to A e to the 2t plus B e to the negative 2t. Since the right hand side of the equation 3 is a polynomial of degree 0, the particular integral is given by YPI equals to P. Feeding the particular integral through equation 3 yields the equation negative 4p equals to 16. Therefore, p equals to negative 4. Now, the general solution is given by y equals to ycf plus ypi. So, YCF is A times E to the 2T 
plus b times e to the negative 2t and our ypi is negative 4 so we add them together now we need to express the boundary conditions in terms of the variables in the given differential equations after the substitution in equation 3. This is done immediately below. So dy dx equals to 1 over x times dy dt and x equals to e to the t. So dy dx equals to 0 when x equals to 1. Hence, we can say that dy dt equals to 0 when t equals to 0. Differentiating equation 4 with respect to t gives dy dt equals to 2 times a times e to the 2t minus 2 times b times e to the negative 2t. And inserting the boundary conditions above gives 0 equals to 2a minus 2b from equation 5 and 0 equals to a plus b minus 4 from equation number 4. And solving both equations, we know that a equals to b equals to 2. Now that we have solved for the unknowns a and b, the particular solutions in terms of the new variable is thus given by y equals to 2 times e to the 2t plus 2 times e to the negative 2t minus 4. Now we want to express the y in terms of x. So substitute back x equals to e to the t. We have y equals to 2x squared plus 2 over x squared minus 4. Hence, we times x squared on both sides of the equation and obtain the final results of x squared y equals to 2 times x squared minus 1 squared. That's all for today's video. If you are interested in more genuine sharing by other geniuses, please subscribe to our channel and don't forget to turn on the notification bell, ding dong. Also, if you're struggling with one or two past your questions and the March scheme just doesn't seem to help, Genius got you covered. Feel free to let us know what question it is by filling in the Google form linked in the description below. Genius Hub will get genius teachers to fulfill your request for the solution. Genie, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.